first off, before we start the review, I just want to say to anyone that didn't see my little review on NRB Knife Juice on Instagram, really pick yourself up a bottle of this. It's really freaking good. And honestly, it's probably going to be the type of lube that I'm going to use from now on. So if any of you are curious to what lube I use or have ever wanted to ask me, this is it. NRB Knife Juice. It's on nrbknives.com. You can get it in two different sizes. This is the 10 milliliters. Um, it's really freaking good. I highly recommend this stuff. So for a while now, I thought not much of a Tropos. I really wasn't a big fan of it. Uh, mostly because most of the knives that he makes aren't really that good for flipping. Uh, there isn't really anything there that is screaming to be flipped, uh, other than the demon, really. Um, and I can definitely tell that in his products, because most of his stuff he does is handmade, so it's not all going to be extremely precise and 100% comfortable. I mean, I tried the Demon Light, for those of you who don't remember, and uh, I was, it was really cool when I first got it. I really liked the appeal of it. Um, but over time, I found it just wasn't as good as something like the Squid Trainer I had at the time, or the, the Serpent Striker, which I also had at the time, uh, which I still have, but um, it, it didn't really compare to them when it comes to the overall quality, the comfortable stuff. And it just really didn't flip as good as either of them, um, mostly because it had a raging amount of, uh, of blade bias, but um, that's just depending on what kind of bias you have towards knives. Um, and it really just wasn't that great overall of a knife. So I thought there really can't be anything else that is that good. Well, don't worry because I actually found one. So for those of you who don't know what this is, this is the Atropos Kirat 2. It is quite simply the best knife you can get from Atropos, period. This is one of the best looking, in my personal opinion, the best flipping, and overall just best for your money, uh, if I had to be honest. Uh, so let's go over some specs. First off, this is the newer version of the Kirat 2. It has had some small little improvements over time. As you may know, if you originally saw the first versions of the Kirat 2, um, they had the uh, circular titanium handles that were, um, you know, basically just very circular, very cylinder-like, and it made it very good for choker fans. It's very similar to the handles on the Demon. Um, these have a slight little improvement to it. Uh, if you can kind of tell that there is a bit of a flat area on these handles, uh, and they're not all just completely round. There is some round area, as you can see near the bottom of the handles. It is pretty cylinder like down there, um, which makes it good for choker fans. Um, but does, that doesn't mean that the flat area doesn't mean uh, it's not good for fanning. It still is very good for fanning. Um, and honestly, I think he's really just overall after that, besides that, he's just kind of improving his craftsmanship. Um, but uh, anyways, let's move on to some specifications. So. The Demon blade is in D2. The Kirat blade is in N690 steel, which I think is a bit of an improvement. Um, just like the Demon, this is running on bushings and washers. This is on Zen pins, as you can kind of see. Um, and just like the Demon, this is on channel titanium handles uh, with this nice, um, first off, this gray finish, which I believe is just, you know, a bee blasted finish applied to it. And um, it also has the nice little circle texture on it, which is actually pretty nice, if I do have to be honest. I do like this style of gripping. Um, the handles are really grippy, um, if you're about grip. Uh, anyways, one thing that is cool about Atropos is that, believe it or not, he does allow you to customize your knives a bit. Like some of the minor things, actually, I think you can actually fully customize your order depending on what you want. So um, when you're purchasing a knife from Atropos, there is like a little notes section near the bottom of the page and you're ordering it. Like notes about your order or stuff like that. Something you would see commonly if you're ordering online. 
So down in that section, he has stated that you can add anything that you want to do to customize your knife. So um, if you want the handles that I have, the latchless handles, all you have to do is type in that little box latchless and you'll get a latchless Kirat, which is pretty darn cool. So if you don't want to have the hassle to take off the, um, you know, standard one with the latch, you can just get a latchless one, which should include a more of a, a rear bias if you're about that. Uh, I wanted to go with the latchless for one, for two reasons mainly. Uh, so I didn't have to take the latch off and so that I could be sure that this didn't have a blade bias. And I think I got those two things because this honestly has a great bias to it. So some other little small things along with that, as you can see clearly the spine is rounded, kind of similar to a, uh, you know, a replicant. It's uh, nice and round and um, it's quite comfortable. And I really do suggest that you get the, uh, the uh, Zen pin one rather than the tank pin one, just because his tank pins I've heard are kind of weird. And uh, you don't really want to take the chance of uh, those pins falling out in case they are kind of loose. So go with the Zen pins one. And I, I do think it is kind of worth it because it looks a lot cleaner, uh, honestly. Now, um, I'm not really, uh, even though I've tried a bunch of knives over the past few weeks, um, I'm still not quite uh, sure what I could compare this to. The closest thing I could probably compare it to is maybe a Chab at most, but that's probably just because they both have channel titanium. Um, but that's probably the closest thing I compare it to when it comes to the flipping performance. Um, I really do think that this is probably his best knife, mostly because uh, the bias is actually good. It's solid. Tolerances are pretty good. It's not gonna fly off your finger when you're doing chaplains and stuff. And it sounds good. I'm actually quite surprised how closely it resembles in sound to a Kraken. It's like almost completely similar in general to a Kraken. Some might argue that it doesn't sound like a Kraken, but I don't know. Mine in particular sounds a lot like the Kraken I used to have. And uh, I think that's really cool uh, because, uh, I don't know. I remember one time where I was deciding whether I should get a Kraken over this. And I did get a Kraken over this because one, it was gonna take forever. And uh, two, it was just more popular and uh, more people had reviewed it. Um, but uh, one person standalone had said that that he would choose this any day over a Kraken. I'm not gonna say who it is, because you can just ask. But really, you honestly do have to take into consideration the value of the secondary market for this, because the value is not that big on the secondary market. You can find these for actually pretty cheap, or cheaper than retail price. Unlike Krakens. Uh, obviously, you're if you're buying a Kraken on the secondary market, which you shouldn't do, considering the times now, um, you're gonna be paying like $100 over retail, which is something on its own. I don't care about it really because I tried a Kraken and it was good, obviously, and I understood it, but I just wanted to try things a bit more exciting. It wasn't really, it was good, obviously, but it just wasn't an exciting experience over time. It was so good that it just didn't entertain me to the point where this does. Um, honestly, I think this is a great knife, um, obviously. And uh, if you want to buy one of these, you're better off buying one on the secondary market, obviously, because you're going to get a deal uh, if it's in good condition too, even. Because you're, you're not going to have to pay $100 over retail, even on the secondary market compared to like Kraken's, obviously, which is around that price point this this knife's great i honestly think people should uh you know take this knife into consideration a little bit more it's pretty underrated in my opinion for its flipping performance its price and overall 
build quality. And what you're getting on this, I mean, you're not going to get this anywhere else for more than what you're asking for. Um, not even Krakens, which are around the price point of this, have the same specifications. Yeah, it's on bushings, but it's not channel titanium. This is honestly a really, really good deal, if I had to be supremely honest. You're not going to get this much of a deal, unless you're buying off of the secondary market, of course. But uh, some people have different opinions. I personally think that this is a great knife. For kind of all flipping styles, really. If you're a beginner and want a higher end knife so that later you can flip a higher end knife once you're more skilled, buy this. If you're an advanced flipper and want to try something nice, buy this. If you're an intermediate flipper and are looking for something to practice more on and get an idea of what higher end knives are like, buy this. I'm trying to tell you guys that maybe you should stop considering some of the knives that are kind of overpriced and not really in your affordable market and buy this. I mean, this is a great knife. And I really think that people should consider this more because it's great. I mean, for the price point, I really should have bought this instead of the Kraken because you can't get this anywhere else without having to pay over $300. Buying something that's relatively cheap for this isn't always a safe idea. Obviously, um, there's the whole waiting a long time thing for uh, a Tropos knives, and that is a true thing. Uh, you will have to wait a long time for them, even if you're in Europe. Um, I had to wait 49 days to get this knife. Even though I think that it was worth it to wait it, it still is a very long time to get your knife, which to some people is kind of unacceptable. Now, uh, yeah, obviously waiting 49 days to get a knife is a bit of a pain and it kind of sucks having to wait through that because first off what if you're just trying to get that knife in your hands what if you don't enjoy it at the end or just what if by the time you get it you need to sell it and you can't enjoy the experience waiting 49 days for a knife is definitely not something that i would sign up for um if it were something like a Kraken or, you know, anything in the United States, but it kind of does have its own excuse just because the Russian postal system isn't as big and efficient as other countries. But, uh, damn, it's good. Now, one thing that this thing does that can compete with other bigger brands like BRS is the edge on it. I think the edge is really, really sharp. It has one of the best edges out of the box in the entire industry. In fact, I would go as far as to say it does have the best edge out of the box ever because what if you're someone that just is looking for a nice ballast song to go to work and open some boxes and out of the box, they want it extremely, extremely, extremely sharp. Well, then, you can buy this. I'm not saying you have to buy this because there's obviously some sharpening kits that cost less that you can just kind of, you know, sharpen your own knife that you already have, but most companies won't sharpen it as good as this. Some $500 knives can't sharpen your edges. Obviously, for legal reasons most of the time, but BRS doesn't sharpen it as good, and I can tell you that for certain. Uh, most of the time when I see an extremely sharp knife, that has an edge around this or even better than this, it's because someone has taken that knife and sharpened it on their own. Not many makers can boast as good of an edge. Tropos can't. I really do think that this is a great knife. Underrated, most likely. Anyways, uh, that's my review on the Atropos Kirat 2. If you're interested, there's a link in the description. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. And uh, peace out.